Are you ready, boo? If there's two things we can count on, it's taxes and SpongeBob being weird. And one is certainly more welcome than the other. The show spawns countless memes through its absurdity, randomness, and some lines that just leave me scratching my head in bewilderment. I wumbo, you wumbo, he she me wumbo. So since SpongeBob is always a fun list to make, let's check out the top six weirdest SpongeBob episodes. For this list, I could really use the help of a real SpongeBob expert. Hey yo, what is up everyone, and what's up, Strider? Oh, howdy, Alpha. A fine uh, hey yo to you too. You've analyzed tons of SpongeBob episodes with a fine tooth comb on your channel. Would you mind helping me out with this list? I'd be glad to help. I can certainly recall some particularly weird episodes that left me puzzled on what I just watched. Okay, great. Welcome to the show. Why don't you pick an episode first? Okay, number six. Whirly Brains. Oh, I don't see what's so weird about this episode. But watch this. Just look at what the Whirly Brains is. Get your Whirly Brain today and Ooh. free your mind! Oh. Oh, okay. So, Spongebob and Patrick discover a new toy on television that forcefully yanks out their brain and spinal cord. Whoa, Patrick! I've never seen the world from this angle before! And yet they still seem delighted to get their hands on it. No matter how happy Spongebob and Patrick seem about it, it's hard not to feel a little squeamish as we watch their brains and spinal cords dangling outside of their open skulls or being tossed around and stretched like dog chow. The whole thing doesn't even remotely make anatomical sense. Besides, Patrick doesn't even have a brain. He's a starfish. Mind you, I suppose Spongebob isn't exactly a show that prides itself on being a realistic representation of the biology of ocean creatures. The only one who seems to have the same weirded out reaction as the audience seems to be Squidward, who is understandably terrified. It even leads to them slowly beginning to lose their minds. Only the dismal abyss of black nothingness. Which makes sense, because they literally lose their minds. Whirly Brains more than fits the category of squeamish, bizarre, and overall just a weird episode. Phew! I'll never be a no-brainer again! Ah! And for number five... Salsa Imbecilus. Picture all the citizens of Bikini Bottom for a second. Now bring the IQ of every single one of them down to Patrick's level. To the point where they're literally wearing pants on their heads, riding upside down skateboards, considering lottery tickets a good investment, and, well, just acting pinheaded to a scale of biblical city-destroying proportions. In fact, a good chunk of this episode is just watching Sandy marvel at the sheer stupidity occurring around her. The big Krabby Patties! Uh, that's mud? Plankton has the brilliant idea to make a chow that gives everyone the intellectual capacity of Patrick. The only citizen who doesn't become weirdly out of character is Patrick, because the serum was based on his cheese stick IQ. So Sandy and Karen work together to try and cure the town of their head-slammingly stupefied state. But at first, the best idea they can come up with is feeding them nuts? For arguably two of the smartest characters in the show, it's a pretty silly idea. But their ideas do improve when they decide to educate them, which I guess makes sense. In fact, it it actually works. The entire town graduates and I guess everyone's back to normal. Well, that made absolutely zero sense. Yep, Salsa and Bellicus is a nonsensical oddball episode from beginning to end. And for number four, Frankendoodle. This one breaks the fourth wall so much it might as well be a fourth window. A real life fisherman drops his pencil. which apparently has the power to create life under the sea. When Spongebob gets hold of this relic of Jeebus, he basically begins to play God. But things start to get even weirder when Spongebob starts to make creepy pencil replicas of sea creatures. It's kind of creepy looking when it moves. Yeah, you're right, Spongebob. Then he makes a particularly oddball sand-like replica of himself that quickly turns into a silent, violent, inhuman monster. 
Well, it's kind of silent. It mainly grunts and makes strange, indistinct utterances. The evil Frankendoodle goes rampant and starts drawing its own distorted, calamitous, two-dimensional pencil world. Even when Spongebob erases Freakin' Doodle, it still manages to arise out of disembodied hands, returning from the dead to assassinate the real Spongebob. <laughs> and this eraser doesn't just have the power to erase drawings, it literally has the power to erase the entire sea world. In a nefarious, slightly incohesive, weird battle of pencils, Spongebob defeats the, uh, evil pencil-y thing, and once again, the sea is safe. And Spongebob gives the artist his pencil back, so everybody wins. <laughs> or do they? Frank and Doodle is a great example, from season 2, of the writers playing with the fourth wall to create a weird and kind of creepy, but creative and gripping episode. I am Spongebob, destroyer of evil! Take it easy, it's just a drawing. And the third weirdest Spongebob episode is... SB129. This episode starts off like most Spongebob episodes do. Squidward's enjoying some peace and quiet, which promptly gets interrupted by Spongebob. Have you ever noticed how in the early seasons, Squidward often enjoys the process of playing with Spongebob? In a scene like this, he gets even more caught up in the game, more than Spongebob. I wonder if that's something people miss in later seasons. You know, I never noticed that before, but you're right. Squidward's not just constantly rolling his eyes and being apathetic like in later seasons. He seems to genuinely enjoy participating in some of Spongebob's games. It kind of adds to the fun for the viewer when we can see that Squidward's having some fun too. But things start to get really weird when in Squidward's fight for solitude, he accidentally freezes himself for 2,000 years. 2,000 years later. This gives us a glimpse of Bikini Bottom 2,000 years into the future, where we meet SpongeTron. And don't forget SpongeTron's 486 clones. Somebody say jellyfishy? Leading Squidward to promptly land in a time machine and be thrown in the prehistoric past. Now I can finally be alone with my clarinet. Still unable to get solitude because he has to deal with prehistoric SpongeBob. <laughs> But then it flips the weird bar into overdrive, as we see, well, what would you even call this, Strider? I'm not quite sure, Alpha. It's like a perplexing hallucinogenic string of consciousness. All we know is that this is the result of Squidward's time machine malfunctioning. Ah, oh, the end of the universe, maybe? Yeah, the end of the universe. I think that's the closest guess we're gonna get. In this world of... Nothingness? We watch Squidward go mad with terror as he realizes he'll be alone in this void for all eternity. He does get home in the end, but this was still a very strange, mystifying trip for Squidward and the viewers. And the second weirdest SpongeBob episode is... Sponge Henge. Have you ever had one of those days? You know, where you get a jellyfish stuck in your brain and all the jellyfish in the sea start stalking you? To the point where you get stuck in a cave and get so desperate that you carve people out of rocks? No, I don't think I can say that I have. Oh, uh, well, SpongeBob has a day or a many, many days like this apparently. We discover that during windstorms, SpongeBob's holes create music that attracts jellyfish. Leading to him becoming sort of a jellyfish piper? Oh, stop it, please stop it! Ah! Eventually, to give himself some peace and solitude from the little critters, later, he carves out many, many huge stone obelisks in his image, creating music that apparently goes on for thousands of years. Our buddy Spongebob tries to go back to Bikini Bottom, but realizes he's been gone for what looks like half a century. And the last scene we get of him is him collapsing in despair in front of the Krusty Krab. Interestingly, this episode points out that Spongebob may actually be a genius artisan. I mean, his obelisks are so perfectly crafted that they bring perfect music to the jellyfish for millennia. 
It's a shame he's never tried being an architect instead of a fry cook. It'd probably pay a lot better than Mr. Krabs pays him. This episode remains famous for being one of the most far out bewildering episodes in all of Spongebob. And before we get to number one, just some quick honorable mentions. Fungus Among Us. This episode isn't so much watching Spongebob spread shenanigans as it is watching Spongebob spread fungus and disease all over town. I personally found it mainly just gross and not really weird. Face Freeze. This episode is weird, but mostly because of the weird faces. Overall, it's just a good old fashioned cautionary kids tale on silly faces. Anyway, on to number one. And the number one weirdest Spongebob episode is... Squidward in Clarinet Land. Where clarinets can live without persecution. You need to learn respect. Squidward in Clarinet Land isn't so much an episode so much as watching the writers descent into madness? We start with a seemingly normal story about Squidward just wanting some storage space, but it rapidly dissipates into a demented world of sight, mind, and clarinets. What is this place? How this strange clarinet world came to exist is unknown. If this isn't just Squidward's dream, did SpongeBob create this world? I don't know. It's more like a nightmare dimension where Squidward is constantly encountering mystifying otherworldly creatures and objects. And if that wasn't weird enough, then the eagle eats him, throwing Squidward into its inner organs and digestive tract. Then, apparently because that wasn't weird enough, Squidward randomly appears in rooms full of mirrors, holes, and evil doppelgangers of himself. <laughs> then the episode just abandons all attempt at coherence and goes into complete off-the-wall mind-screw territory. Squidward just begins jumping randomly through clarinet-inspired hallucinations, pinballs, and giant vacuums in his desperate attempt to escape this nightmare dimension. Then apparently, Spongebob and Squidward grow giant and go into orbit? Does that make sense? We are truly in zero sense territory, my friend. I fear us attempting to make sense of this may leave us both in a state of madness. Finally, Squidward appears back in his locker, making us question, was any of that real? Hmm, maybe it was a hallucination caused by a gas leak in the Krusty Krab. Yeah, a gas leak is certainly a plausible theory. It could have even just been that Squidward was simply tired and fell asleep in his locker. Maybe Squidward dreams about these clarinet-inspired drug trips regularly. Either way, Squidward and Clarinet Land certainly remains the weirdest, most twisted, nonsensical SpongeBob episode I've ever seen. Do you know the horror I've endured? Let's see how you like it! But the nice part is, as well as that absurdity we've come to expect from Spongebob, we can also expect each episode to be packed with that inherent creativity, colour and good cheer to them, that honestly just wraps the entire Spongebob series like a warm picnic blanket. And for that reason, Spongebob will probably remain one of my favourite cartoon series, as long as Nickelodeon can keep it running. And if you think we missed a particularly weird episode, feel free to leave your thoughts in the comments. And as always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.